Greetings and salutations, everybody, and welcome to the Canuck Podcast, the podcast done by fans for fans of everything nerdy. I am your host, Lord X, and I welcome you to this weekly program. We actually made it a week, two weeks in a row, which is amazing. Anyways, uh, joining me here this week is Israel Pacheco. Yay. <laughs> How's it going, dude? Yeah, everything's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Except for my brother going crazy. <laughs> Call of Duty. <laughs> Screaming help. But, uh, yeah, everything's good. Very good, very good. Uh, been quite the interesting week since we uh, last uh, recorded the podcast. Uh, some very big news came out, <laughs> I guess, to say. Uh, along with GDC happening, there were some other reveals popping up. And yeah, we got quite a few news stories to cover this week. And this is probably why I should write a script more often. Because I don't <laughs> have one this week. <laughs> Alright, so uh, I guess we just dive right into the news stories that we got here. And uh, do you want to kick us off with some absolutely amazing news? So, some news coming out of GDC as you spoke about earlier, is that there's going to be two major updates coming to the PS4. The first one being one that adds a video editing feature. So I guess it would be something similar to the Xbox One, that they have a video editing feature on there. Um, There's going to be option to turn off HDCP, which has been an issue for a lot of people with capture cards. Uh, Twitch is going to be streaming now at 720p. And the second update is going to be to the Twitch app, and you're going to be able to archive Woo! your streams, finally, now that uh, the Xbox One has it. So, reading this, it pretty much brings the two consoles closer in, in terms of parity, because mm. uh, the Xbox One, since launch, has had you know, the editing feature. Uh, Twitch just launched last week with Titanfall, and you could archive your footage. And uh, I I believe the Xbox One doesn't have the HDCP issues that the PS4 has. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is really cool that they could do something like this with a software update. It really, you know, improves the experience overall. And uh, speaking about, you know, the the video editor, you'll be able to record footage that's longer than 15 minutes. Because, you know, hitting the share button as of right now, you could only record the last 15 minutes of gameplay. Mm -hmm. You could record more than that. And now you could put it on a memory stick and then, uh, you know, put it on your computer, edit it further, or just uh-huh. throw it up on YouTube. So that's going to be really cool. Yes, and for people like ourselves, that will be mm-hmm. awesome for doing videos now. Probably going to have to do voiceover on the recording itself. I, I can't see doing actual commentary while playing and recording. Hopefully that would be nice, but... I don't see that happening. <laughs> yeah, and probably the audio quality wouldn't be that great. Because I know I, I've done some video editing stuff on the Xbox One, and I keep comparing it because <laughs> it's a direct competition, yeah. and it's had this feature. So the audio isn't that great because it records through the Kinect. So I don't know, maybe this will allow you to record through the microphone on the PS4 controller. Awesome. That, that'd be pretty cool. But we don't know the specific details as of right now, so. Yeah. So, hopefully good things. And uh, I'm quite excited to see what Achievement Hunter will finally do now that they'll be able to actually record PlayStation 4 footage because they've been complaining about that since launch. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping it comes soon, especially since they've been doing that whole sharing campaign through different ads on online and on the TV and everything. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm hoping it's coming soon. Same here. All right. Well, even though this is usually a gaming and movie and all around nerd type podcast, it's time to talk some sports. And when I go to sports, I'm going to talk about the FIFA 2014 World Cup in Brazil. Uh, no, we're not going to actually talk about sports. Uh, we're going to talk about what Japan is going to be doing at the FIFA 2014 World Cup in Brazil. And uh, every, every country usually has their mascot. And I, I honestly have no idea what the Canadian one is or what the U.S. one is because I do not pay attention to soccer at all. 
or football, sorry, <laughs> international <laughs> fans. Uh, but uh, Nintendo here is doing something absolutely awesome, and they're they picked their national soccer team mascot as Pikachu. <laughs> Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> it it really is. It is. Uh, <laughs> I I'm sorry. I'm looking at the image with the giant Pikachu there. <laughs> Indeed, is. <laughs> uh, when I think soccer, I think Pikachu. Yeah. Uh, but hey, this is kind of cool. You know, blending. It just shows you the popularity of Pokemon once again, like for Japan and how big it is there that. They can take that, you know, those characters and use them as national mascots for what is arguably the biggest sports event in the world. <laughs> yeah. Soccer, uh, well, football, <laughs> as you were saying, yeah. is huge worldwide, not here in the States. And I don't know about Canada, if it's nope. <laughs> popular, <laughs> I'm guessing. We like know, pretty hockey, much, eh? <laughs> pretty, pretty much North America is not huge on football, but mm -hmm. in terms of the worldwide audience, it is pretty damn big. Yep. And for, uh, you know, a character like Pikachu to be the mascot in Japan, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool because we, we don't really see that type of crossover yeah. usually. Uh, <laughs> there have been the Mario and Sonic Olympic Games, but <laughs> those are games. Yeah, and and uh, best left not to talk about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those are games. They aren't, like... I, of course, this isn't real life, but it football is real, and to have these characters as as your mascot mm -hmm. is is pretty pretty damn cool. Yep. Uh, and as far as I know, I think uh, Screw Attack mentioned this on their uh, daily news show, Heard News, that mm -hmm. it, it's not only Pikachu representing them as a mascot, but a whole bunch of Pokemon, one for every player on the team, and. There is an image up that shows a bunch of starters, including Squirtle, Bulbasaur, Charmander, uh, the new guys whose names right now I can't remember, Meowth, the Panda. <laughs> <laughs> panda. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of them, so yeah, it's re really, really cool. Really enjoying that. This is probably the, the most random news story. Out of all of them. Yeah, yeah. Probably the most random we've had in quite some time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Outside of uh, Ashes Cricket, I think. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, why don't you take us away with the next story to get us back into the world of gaming. So, the next new story we got here is that Microsoft has announced at GDC, as we've been talking about, that uh, 25 indie games under the ID at Xbox, you know, I guess their initiative that they're calling it for, I guess, in indie developers and people bringing games to their consoles, 25 games are coming, and uh, it's a long list here. I'm not going to read every single one, <laughs> but uh, let me read some of the ones that have, uh, you know, how do you call that? <laughs> I just went blank for a second, that pop out at me, because right. I've heard about them before, or they're on other consoles, so... The first one, 1001 Spikes, which uh, I've seen before, and what caught my attention was the whole Indiana Jones-inspired, uh, it's not really box art, but it's like promotional art. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what else. Dive Kick. That's, yeah! been on, uh, that's been on the PlayStation consoles. Same thing with Guacamelee. Oh. It's coming out. Um, what else here? Catch the Super this. Turbo uh, Championship Edition. <laughs> yeah, the, with all the new features. And uh, that's about it in terms of what catches my eye. There's a bigger list. Oh, yeah, Contrast, which has been on the PS4. Mm -hmm. Castle Storm. Yep. That's been on, I, is, is it on PS3? I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's been on, uh, well, it's by Zen Studio, so it's safe to say that it's been on pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it's a whole bunch of games, a whole bunch of indie titles. Hopefully, I get to, you know, learn more about these titles as they come out. Maybe yeah. they catch my interest as of right now. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them I know, really, 1001 Spikes is the only one that's, like, new to me mm -hmm. that I know some information about. The rest of them yeah, that uh, uh, have been on other platforms. Uh, mm -hmm. 
I don't know too much about, but I'm uh, looking down through the list there, a couple that catches my eye. They got Hyper Light Drifter coming out for it, which I'm excited to play on the Vita. Mm -hmm. Um there was another one there too, Super Time Force, which I think I've seen a trailer before and that looks absolutely bonkers. <laughs> Is that the one that's like uh Contra? It looks sort yeah, of like yeah, Contra, kinda, right? Kind of like Contra and Metal Slug, I believe. Yeah. The side scrolling shoot 'em up. Yeah, I I have heard about that one, yeah. But that it, one looks it, cool. it's great to know that, you know, the Xbox will actually be getting some good indie titles coming to it. Mm -hmm. Even though more are coming for the PS4 anyway. <laughs> yeah. And probably a lot of these are probably be on the PS4 eventually. A lot of these already are. Though. Yeah, they already are, but from well, the, the, the new ones. Yeah, that's what I mean, too. Like, uh, 1001 Spikes is coming to the PS4. Oh, maybe. okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dive Kick is. Mm -hmm. Guacamelee is. Hyperlight Drifter. Super Time Force. I'm pretty yep. sure it's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, Strike Suit Zero, I believe, is already out <laughs> for like PS3. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, it's great though. Indie indie developers need more love on more systems. So really happy to see this. Same here. All right, so I guess uh, we can move on to our next story, our last gaming story. Well, everybody may think that Microsoft is Skynet. But as we see this year, Sony has proved that they are going to enter the Matrix. Because they revealed their PlayStation 4 VR headset, known as Project Morpheus. I, I, just, I just got that now. Project Morpheus. I didn't get it the whole time that I knew about this new story. Oh, the Matrix. In, that's genius. That's genius. I never got it till now. Yeah, yeah. So Sony has officially revealed their virtual reality headset, kind of akin to the Oculus Rift. So, mm. yeah, the Sony is preparing to enter into a whole, whole new uh, realm of gaming for the PlayStation 4. Um, there's a quote here, I believe this is from uh, Shuhei Yoshida, who said, We believe Morpheus will further enhance the world of PlayStation 4 with seamless integration with PlayStation Camera, DualShock 4, and PlayStation Move. So yeah, we're not rid of the move just yet. <laughs> That's what I thought when I read that, too. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> I'm never going away. Yep. <laughs> But, yeah, uh, I, I'm really, really interested in this uh, technology. So, what about you? What do you think about this? Uh, is it I'm I'm really interested, too, especially with, you know, the, the press that the Oculus Rift has gotten over the last, what, year or two? Mm -hmm. That it, it's been been out there. Well, it hasn't been out there that long. The, what do you call that? The development kits have been, you know, prototype development kits have been out for a couple months. Uh, but what I found interesting about this is that this version of the, you know, prototype VR headset already has a 1080p display, mm -hmm. 360 degree tracking, low latency. And I know that this has been a complaint for the Oculus Rift. They said like the consumer version is going to have those features, but mm -hmm. I know the developer version doesn't have those features right now. So it's kind of cool that it's this far along. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much my point. <laughs> it's not like something they just, no. they just came out of nowhere. No, they um, were basically showing off at the press conference that they've been developing this now for the past four years, essentially. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's interesting. We'll we'll see what happens with this, uh, especially the the price point. If a PS4 yeah. is uh, four hundred dollars and this is another four hundred dollars, it's really expensive. You know, Probably purchase. Mm -hmm. Unless they bring out a bundle that's like six hundred and it brings a uh, this, but that that kind of be. I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens if they end up bundling this with consoles, mm -hmm. or it just becomes a accessory, like the PlayStation camera and the Move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I I can't see this being any less than two hundred bucks though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the Oculus Rift right now, what is it? A you know. 
over three hundred, is it? Over three hundred, four hundred dollars. Yeah. So and we don't know how much the consumer version of the Oculus Rift is going to cost, but mm-hmm. yeah, this is probably going to be upwards two hundred plus. So yep, and it'll be interesting to see um, what games they develop for it. Or if they already have like games that are going to be coming out, and they add this feature to it. I know at uh, GDC they at their demo station, or in at their little reveal too, they showed off a special version of Thief running mm. with the virtual headset. Oh, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And that that just came out too. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm interested to see how it works because everybody's really high up. On uh, Oculus Rift, but I haven't uh, I haven't tried one out because I don't have one available to me, <laughs> and I'm not gonna buy a <laughs> development kit at several hundred dollars when there's gonna be a better version. And I'm not really a PC gamer either, so mm-hmm. which is another thing we didn't really talk about. This this is a console version of something that's been on the PC, yep. Then that's been primarily PC focused because they haven't licensed that out to. You know, Microsoft, Nintendo, definitely not Sony now that they got their own. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this turns out and if we see anything at E3. Yeah. You know, any games that will support this or we get a release date on this or pricing or... Yeah. I, I don't know. doubt if we will until next year's E3. Really. Yeah, most likely. This but. was just like the little, look, we're actually doing it. This is how far we're along with it. It's coming soon. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it'll probably come with a red pill and a blue pill. <laughs> this will I'm interested to see how it turns out. Cause mm-hmm. I don't know. Because these devices, they've always in, intrigued me. Like virtual reality. Mm-hmm. But uh, as far as I know from what people have said, Oculus Rift actually works. It isn't like the old <laughs> crap yeah. from the 90s. <laughs> uh Maybe this will inspire Nintendo to make the Virtual Boy too. <laughs> That'd be interesting. A red screen, <laughs> terrible. Oh my god! But Give now me. that it's on the Wii U, it'll have a dash of blue as well. <laughs> <laughs> Just be blue instead of red. But yeah, and I'm I'm interested to see how this turns out. Um, but you know how some of these things go. Sometimes these company announce things, and it, like you said, it takes a year or two for them to really show off what it could do or announce a release date or mm-hmm. it's just a prototype at this point. Yep. Maybe it ends up never shipping. Yeah. <laughs> I doubt it if they've invested this much money into it, but it, it could happen. We've seen that happen in the past from a vitality sensor. <laughs> <laughs> it's still coming, damn it. <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna save the Wii U, the vitality <laughs> sensor. They're gonna turn it into sex toy and sell millions of units. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I guess we can move on oh to our God, next yes. before, uh, we get even worse. before we get any more perverted. Yes. But <laughs> All right, take us into the realm of movie news. So yeah, first, you know, I was going to say round, but there's really just two stories. But uh, the first new story we have here that's movie related is that Disney has officially announced both The Incredibles 2 and Cars 3. That they're in the works over at Pixar right now. Uh, when I heard about this, <laughs> which is earlier today when you sent the notes, I was like, yes, Incredibles 2 and fuck Cars 3. <laughs> <laughs> fuck cars. But uh, I, I really enjoyed the first Incredibles movie. Mm-hmm. It was a really good movie, and it didn't use any you know real superheroes like from the Marvel or DC universes, but they created something really unique and really cool over at Pixar and... Uh, like I said, Cars doesn't really interest me. I, the concept has always been strange to me that they live in a world <laughs> that's only cars, planes, and boats, and they all speak to each other, and there's no humans. I don't know. It's, it's just a weird concept to me. Yep. But uh, Incredibles 2, I'm definitely down for. What do you think about this, uh, Incredibles 2 and Cars 3? I was so excited. Then I read the end of the article, and I was like, oh, Cars 3 as well. But, uh, yeah, I am absolutely thrilled for Incredibles 2. Outside of the Toy Story franchise, I think The Incredibles is probably, like, my favorite Pixar movie. 
I'm with you there, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I'm quite excited that, yeah, they're actually going to do it. We're probably not going to see this until maybe 2018, because I know Pixar has, like, a massive slate of movies already coming out. <laughs> yeah. Plus, all the other Disney movies coming out. Yeah. Because I, I guess they don't want to compete with, with each other. Like, they got the Marvel movies coming out, yep. and then they got the... Star Wars. Star Wars movies coming out, man. And they their own uh, Disney Animation Studio stuff. Yeah. They got a lot of movies coming out, so... Uh, hopefully we see this sooner than later. Mm -hmm. uh, at least okay. The Incredibles 2. I hope we never see Cars 3. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Incredibles was really good. I, when When... I remember, did I see that in theaters or on, on DVD? I was about to say video. Sound like I'm in the 80s. But uh, <laughs> you see that on home video. But, uh, yeah, I was going into it thinking, man, this is going to be dumb. They don't have any licensed characters. It's not going to work. And I finished the movie, and I'm like, wow, this was really good. They created their own little universe of superheroes and villains. Mm -hmm. And it was really enjoyable. Like you said, it's up there with, with Toy Story for me in terms of the best uh, Pixar movies. Yeah. yeah, it was great just like how they even made fun of some of the little small things about superheroes, like capes. Never oh, yeah. Never cape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the little... <laughs> it's not... I was going to say like inside jokes, but it's like things you don't really think Pick about. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. Cannot wait for that. Yeah. Well, speaking of superheroes. <laughs> yes. Well, we reported, uh, Jesus, about a month or so ago now that Batman, Super, Batman versus Superman, or Batman and Superman, or World's Finest, or whatever the fuck they're going to call that cluster. Arkham of, World. No. <laughs> <laughs> whatever they're going to call that clusterfuck of a movie right now mm -hmm. uh, was delayed until. Uh, May 6, 2016, and as we knew at that point, there's going to be another Marvel movie on that exact same day, and we started speculating, like, what movie could Marvel put out on that day to compete with Batman and Superman, and it's kind of been revealed this week. Uh, it hasn't been officially announced yet, but The Hollywood Reporter reported <laughs> on it, saying that, oh wait, uh, yeah, yeah, the Hollywood Reporter reported on it, saying that Marvel's Captain America 3 will actually face off against DC's uh, team-up movie. Yeah. Uh, it, it's kind of strange hearing about this when Captain America 2 hasn't <laughs> in theaters yet. Mm -hmm. It's always kind of strange when news stories like these leak mm -hmm. and movies that aren't even out yet and they're talking about sequels but i i'm all for it like i would love to see them go head to head and see what happens mm -hmm. i can't remember any time you know in the history of cinema that there's been a like two superhero movies on the same day yeah it like I, i've seen them like within the span of like a week or two weeks yep sure but not going head to head there might be something out there but i can't think off the top of my head, anything, no, really. Either. Man. So this is going to be interesting. Uh, Batman, Superman, um, we'll see how that turns out. It, it could turn out great. It could be terrible. Um, <laughs> yep. But uh, I personally, right now, for myself, if I have to take priority, it's going to be Captain America 3 because mm -hmm. Marvel knows what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, they know what they're doing with, uh, with the films right now. Um I'd, I'd, I honestly, I'd be interested to see Batman versus Superman more, just to see how it turns out. Yeah. But uh, Captain America three is probably Going a safer to... bet in terms <laughs> yeah. of quality. Mm -hmm. But just in terms of potential, Batman versus Superman. But mm -hmm. I, I don't know. <laughs> There's also been rumors that uh, th dates might shift around now, like a week or two. So they don't go head to head, but I say screw it, go head to head. <laughs> yeah. I'd I'd love to see it. Yeah. I think Marvel's even said like Kevin Feige, he's like, "Yep, we're we're gonna stick with that day. Should be a fun <laughs> night." Like yeah, they, I, I they're not great. worried. 
I think it'd be great. Mm-hmm. Like if they both come out and they, you know, do great at the box office mm-hmm. on the same weekend. So. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's going to be interesting if it does happen. Mm-hmm. And we're very close to Captain America too, so yay! <laughs> yeah, that is really right around the corner. Mm-hmm. And hey, that's going to do it for the news stories. We are on fantastic time this week. Mm-hmm. So, Man, uh, it really is fast because we were talking for yeah for like yeah. Man, <laughs> we're going we're flying through this. Yeah! <laughs> this is unusual. We're in the twilight zone, apparently. And something's going to happen, and it suddenly t- turns into a two and a half hour podcast. <laughs> it's like, I just found a whole bunch of games that I need to talk about <laughs> that I hadn't played. Alright, well, let's speaking about playing games, let's dive into the been playing, been watching, and maybe we've actually been reading something section. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, uh, I guess I'll kick us off here this week. Uh, haven't played much of it yet. Uh, I'll be diving back into it after we're done recording, but I've been playing a bit of Final Fantasy X HD on the old PS3. Mm. It, it, it has been good to dive back into that game. Just the opening cinematic and everything just brought back some really great fond memories. And also reminding me, I'm probably about to dedicate another 300 hours of my life to that game. <laughs> really? It's that long? It's a long game? Well, I did everything back in the day. Oh, so. okay. You 100%ed it. Pretty mm. much, yeah. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, uh, everything. The HD upgrade looks incredible. You can easily tell this wasn't just a, uh, you know, quick polish up. They really put a lot of work into this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which is good, because some of these HD collections, they turn out really bad. Yeah. Sometimes, like, uh, Prince of Persia HD had, like, a lot of graphical and glitches and sound issues. I remember buying that, and I got rid of it, because <laughs> <laughs> it, it was really subpar. Yep. Or Silent Hill. Which the PS2 version ended up being better <laughs> than the <laughs> HD version, which that shouldn't be the case. But. Mm-hmm. That's good to hear, though, that it turned out well. Um, which they, they've been promoting this game a lot, actually. Yep. Uh, I remember playing this back in the day on the PS2. I couldn't really get into it. It was the first Final Fantasy game I actually sat down and tried to play. And I, I think I got it at the time. It was already, like, a greatest hits by that point. Because okay. a buddy of mine, he had gotten, like, 10. And I 10-2 might have been out by then already. But mm-hmm. I picked it up. It was, like, one of those games that, you know, you're at a store, you pick up, and then you try. But you never really get into it mm-hmm. for whatever reason for me. Yeah. Personally, for me, it's the last of the great Final Fantasy games. Because mm. uh, recent stuff after that have not been too good. 12 was all right, but had a shitty ending. Mm-hmm. 13, I never want to talk about, but... <laughs> <laughs> I played that one, and that was strange. Oh, you poor bastard. <laughs> it was strange. I got, like, two or three hours in. I'm like, this is weird. I'm not going to play this anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, the first game I've been playing. What about yourself? So the first game, which I, I spoke about last week, <laughs> is uh, Titanfall. Just been playing more of that online, of course, because it's an online-only game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still super fun unlocking more, uh, what do you call like, different options for my loadouts in terms of weapons for my character and for the Titan. It's still super fun. I really love all the maps that I've played on. I I think I've played probably on, on all of them at this point. Mm-hmm. I think there's 15 total, and they're all really well-made Um in terms of their design, they all feel different. They don't feel like carbon copies. Cause that, that's an issue that's happened to me before. Where like first-person shooters or stages, um, they just feel very similar. They, they don't, they're not really unique. But in this game, each stage feels unique. The game's really like feeling like a, a mix of Call of Duty and Halo for me. 
which is actually really good because I'm a huge Halo fan. I really enjoyed Call of Duty up to Black Ops 2. Then Ghost was kind of like, eh. Mm-hmm. But uh, I like the the mix, and it, it, it just feels really cool um, when you're playing it. Um, I had, like, an issue with one of my controllers, <laughs> my Xbox One controller, and I found out that it was low battery. My dumb ass. <laughs> My dumb ass was flipping out because I thought the controller was broken. They didn't realize my battery was low, and I read online the, you know, uh, force feedback start stops working once the battery is low to conserve power. So, um, but I I did have a broken Xbox controller, the the one um that had it happened before this, like a couple weeks ago. I had an issue with a controller, mm-hmm. um, but that one was actually broken. This one isn't broken. I just need new batteries, which is a good thing. But I kind of ranted on that. So, uh, sorry, Microsoft, because it was my bad. My dumb ass. <laughs> we didn't realize it. But it, it's still super fun. It's one of those games that um, I'm happy I picked up. It's really filling that void for a multiplayer game. Because mm-hmm. I had been playing Call of Duty Ghosts even if I wasn't enjoying it a lot. But this ha- has taken up that multiplayer game of just, you know, pop in, play around. Um which sounded really dirty, right? There. <laughs> <laughs> but what I mean is, uh, I just like really appreciate these types of games nowadays where you don't have to sit down for long periods of time and there's a lot of story and you got to remember like 15 different characters and it's just simple. I could, you know, be like maybe an hour to go to work and then I'll play a couple rounds. Or I come home and I play a couple rounds and it's just very flexible. You don't have to be there for long periods of time, maybe like 10, 15 minutes around. So cool. it's really fun. Definitely recommend it if you have an Xbox One, even the PC version. I don't know if they fixed that because I know there were some issues on the PC version. The 360 version got delayed. Um, I don't know what's going on with that. Maybe they just <laughs> they just want to. <laughs> sell as many Xbox One bundles as they can, mm. which I applaud them for bundling in Titanfall with, with Xbox One, which I think is really cool to bundle one of your biggest games, if not the biggest game on the console right now. That's yeah. cool. So, yeah, what what else have you been playing? Uh, well, I've been playing more Dark Souls 2. <laughs> you mean I... dying? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Is dying over and over? Essentially, yes. Uh, since we last recorded, I've actually beaten a few bosses. Uh, a few of them were, eh, pretty easy. A couple of them really annoyed the ever-loving shit out of me. <laughs> wow. But, uh, yeah, I've actually managed to progress through the game a bit. Uh, I know where the, another set of boxes, bosses are. Yeah, that's right, not mm-hmm. one, but there is three in a room together that you have to fight. Oh, that's gonna be epic. <laughs> yeah. Epically frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh, I have leveled up my character now to level, I think, 56 or so. Uh, but yeah, I have to say, I am really enjoying the game. I'm finding it a lot better than the first Dark Souls. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it, it's great. And the last time I checked the statue that told about how many people had died worldwide... Uh, mm-hmm. What did I mention last week? It was something like six. It was. I want to. I, I know it was over a million. Yeah. Was it? Was it right? around like ten million or something? No, I... it was less than that. Oh That's well like... then. The the last time I actually checked the other night, it was up to fifty one million. Oh, it was only like <laughs> a few million, I think. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow, fifty one million. Yep. Jesus. Fifty one million in a week. That's crazy. Yep, and I'm sure it's probably past 70 million by this point. I haven't checked in the last couple of days because of Final Fantasy. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, the game is absolutely fantastic. Highly, highly recommend it to anybody, except for those mm-hmm. who have anger, anger issues. Yeah, like me. <laughs> that game wouldn't work out <laughs> well for me. Yeah, but that's yeah. Uh, pretty much all I've been playing outside of recording stuff. Mm-hmm. So, what about yourself? Uh, I got two games left. Uh, the first one's kind of probably random, 
And that is a uh, Hatsune Miku Project Diva F. What? For, for, for the Vita. <laughs> I, I would not have expected you to be playing a Japanese music uh, game. Know. Yeah, so th- this one's kind of, you know, random. But I always like to mix it every every now and then, mix it up, and just play some something different. So, so I downloaded, uh, what were you going to say? I was going to say, did you buy the game or just the demo? Uh, I bought the game. I oh. bought the the digital version because they just released it recently here in here in the states, well North America. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been out in Japan for a while. I actually wanted to import a copy, like last year, but it's expensive. Mm-hmm. It was like seventy, eighty, plus shipping. Mm-hmm. So they released this uh, thirty bucks for the download. Of course, I don't get a cartridge, but hey, I get to play the game. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, uh. As being the, my first Hatsune Miku game, it's actually really fun, mm-hmm. but really challenging. Like, yep. I, this morning, I woke up with the damn song stuck in my head. Cause <laughs> of course, I don't know what the hell she's saying because it's all in Japanese. They do have subtitles, but you can't really focus on the subtitles if you're, you know, pressing buttons because you're going to fail, <laughs> fail the song. But they're just really catchy. They're all in Japanese. It's really catchy. Um, I realize that. Hatsune Miku was the one who started the whole Nyan Cat like thing, because like, mm-hmm. she has one of the songs there. I never knew that till this game, <laughs> which I haven't unlocked the song yet. But I was looking at the song list, uh, and it's really fun, um, really challenging. Like I was saying, uh, I haven't played a, a rhythm game in a while. The last one I played was a uh, uh, theater rhythm on the 3DS, which is kind of random too since I'm not a Final Fantasy guy, <laughs> but I actually enjoyed it because I enjoy the Final Fantasy music. But it's really cool. If, if you're a fan of, um, you know, music rhythm games and want something different to try, I definitely recommend it. There's a lot of catchy songs. Of course, it's J-pop, <laughs> and it's very cutesy and girly, and it's if you're playing this, like, on a, a bus or something and somebody walks by, <laughs> you might be embarrassed or something. I personally don't care. I think it's hilarious. But uh, I definitely recommend it. If you have a Vita, definitely check it out. Um, maybe you don't want to pay 30 I could understand that. But maybe it goes on sale at some point. And it's nice for Sega to bring this over because mm-hmm. they did it last year with the PS3 version. That actually got a physical release. But uh, I was waiting on the Vita version and finally came out. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. I'm, I'm still playing it. I've only like probably <laughs> completed like three songs because <laughs> I just bought it the other night and they're pretty damn challenging. Oh, God, yes. I played the uh, demo for the PS3 one, and holy crap. Oh, my Lord. It's one of those games you have to play songs multiple times to learn, yeah. like, the rhythm. Like, you can't just Guitar Hero it. Mm-hmm. Like, how Guitar Hero, you could play, you just play it one time, and you know the song, and you complete it. It wasn't really until you got to the later stages that it got difficult. Mm-hmm. This right off the bat is challenging, and I'm playing on normal, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm just at the beginning of the game. <laughs> but it works great with the... The Vita screen, um, there's some prompts, button prompts on the screen. Yeah. Like these little stars, you swipe the screen. Uh, of course, you use all the, the different buttons, uh, the face buttons on the Vita, uh, the directional button. So it's a combination of different inputs, which is really cool. And uh, it's catchy music. It could be cheesy because <laughs> it I think the first song is called Cat Food. Um, <laughs> and it's just... <laughs> And you see, like, little kitties in the video <laughs> that play, but I don't know. I'm enjoying it. I, I definitely recommend it. If you want something strange and off the wall and you're a fan of the Vita, because i, I kind of been on a Vita kick, I guess, because of uh, beating Hotline Miami, which I spoke about, I think, last week or the week before. Mm-hmm. Um, And I was waiting for, like, some PS Plus stuff, like Unit 13, which came out this week on PS Plus. So this kind of held me off until that came out. I definitely recommend it. It's uh, it's really fun. <laughs> it's, like I said, it's very, very Japanese, very J-pop. But anyway, speaking of Japanese games, my last and final game here is Metal Gear Solid Five: <laughs> Ground Zeroes, which has been causing a lot of controversy. Some people are mad at the ending. Some people are mad at the game being only, you know, a few hours. Some people are mad that it came out at thirty dollars, mm-hmm. and so I'm going to talk about that. Um, let's start off with the price. 
I definitely agree that it should not have come out at thirty dollars. It should have been a game that was, you know, fifteen dollars a downloadable version and twenty dollars a physical version, or maybe just keep it the same: twenty a physical, twenty download for both current and next gen. Because of course, the PS3 download version, three sixty download version is only twenty bucks. But if you want to get a physical or digital for the next gen versions. It's thirty dollars, which is the one that I got, the PS4 version. In terms of the length, I beat the main story mission, and I think my clock time was around an hour and forty minutes. And this is with dying a couple times in between, kind of learning the mechanics because it's been a while since I've played a Metal Gear game, mm -hmm. and this one feels different. The ending, I actually like the ending. I think it's kind of controversial and kind of a. Uh, it it's sort of like a Walking Dead ending, like it it messes with you, um, like it makes you feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. uh, which I liked. And I had no attachment to these characters because this is from the, you know, Peace Walker timeline. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I've played Metal Gear Solid, you know, one. I've played the Twin Snakes. I've played two, and I've played four. So I haven't played three, or Peace Walker. Of course, those are both with Big Boss, A.K. Uh, Naked Snake, which is hilarious, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in terms of the gameplay and in terms of what's there, it was really fun, really good in my opinion. Uh, it feels like an evolution to the Metal Gear series in terms of the controls. I don't know if it's because I'm playing on a PS4 controller <laughs> that it just feels so good or that it's running at 1080p, 60 frames a second, and it's just very smooth. Um, which it isn't the case on, you know, the other consoles. Um, but it, it seems like an evolution to the Metal Gear series. And what I mean about that is now you have a feature similar to the Arkham games. It kind of reminded me of the Arkham games where in this game, Snake gets uh, binoculars and you could zoom in on your enemies. And once you zoom in on them, it tracks them and it puts them on your map. Okay. So it isn't like other games where... You had to keep looking to see where they were in your area. And, and you could see them through walls. You see the little icons on your map. It, it's kind of, um, what's the mode in, in Arkham? The detective mode. Okay, like, yeah. You don't have to put on, it, like, you don't have to throw on a detective mode like Arkham. Like, once you mark them, it kind of gives them that little glow feeling when you're looking through walls and you can see them. So it's, it's really cool. Uh, there aren't a lot of cutscenes. Like, there's a, you know intro cutscene. there's some in between here and there and then a really long one towards the end of course because <laughs> it's kojima but it isn't like you play for five seconds and there's a cut scene like the way they handle the story which is really cool is how they do in the bioshock games you get these audio logs and you can play them as you're walking through the world or as you're taking out enemies or as um you're hiding behind cover and there's a lot of backstory you collect these cassette tapes. Um, you also collect... Well, you are you don't really collect them. You already just have them in your arsenal. These different tapes that give you like a backstory into Peace Walker. I didn't really go into them too much because it was just a lot of them. And I, I just wanted to focus on the story. I did listen to some of them. They were like mission briefings and things like that. And it gave me some backstory. But it's cool how that's handled. Um, you don't have to sit through a cutscene. Uh, the story is just really... It, this isn't a spoiler, but uh, you have to uh, extract two prisoners mm -hmm. because uh, I believe this is somewhere on the coast of Cuba, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it's like a, a military camp, and you have to extract uh, Chico and Paz. So their characters have been in Peace Walker, but since I didn't play that, you know, I didn't, you know, it wasn't like it was Raiden that showed up because I know Raiden from the other Metal Gear games mm -hmm. or, or some of the other characters like Vamp and uh, Liquid Snake or you, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. But um, it was really enjoyable from what I played and it definitely left me with uh, a feeling of, yeah, I'm looking forward to Phantom Pain. I like these improvements in terms of the controls, in terms of the combat. It doesn't feel as stiff as uh, previous Metal Gear games. But it's also like it, it doesn't lose that Metal Gear feeling because there's some games that uh, 
I'm trying to think now that I'm looking at my wall, I see the GTA five poster <laughs> and it's a game like that. Like the jump from GTA four to GTA five was pretty big in terms of the shooting mechanics. Yeah. So, uh, it isn't that big, but it does feel better than metal gear solid four in terms of the shooting mechanics, at, at least from what I think and the combat and being able to interrogate like, uh, you know, the enemies or, and then knocking them out. And then of course hiding them, but the AI in this game was pretty damn difficult. And that's why I said when my playtime was a, an hour and 40 minutes, but I died a couple times and it's cause they don't play around in this game. Like if they spot you, like you got to run away or you got to kill them or you got to take them out and, and then hide, a, you know, the usual normal metal gear thing, but it's more open ended cause it's a large area. It isn't like a, the other Metal Gear games that they've been in and close, you know, uh, linear spaces. It's a big open map. And they, they have said that Phantom Pain, the full game, is going to be huge. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, I do have to go back and complete the five side missions because, of course, you have the main Ground Zero story, which, like I said, I completed in under two hours. But there's also five side missions. Four of them, they come with any version of the game Mm -hmm. but the fifth one is exclusive depending if you get it on the xbox or the playstation consoles on the uh, xbox i believe you get to play as raiden a special mission Mm -hmm. on the playstation consoles you get to relieve or relive (laughs) messing up relive some of the moments of the original metal gear solid with a big boss instead Mm -hmm. but what's strange is i i thought out of the gate you'd be able to pick that mission yeah. and you have to actually beat the ground zeros mission, but you have to collect these nine XOF patches. Huh. So, and I saw that on IG and I'm like, that's kind of strange. Cause even on the box, it says like on the PlayStation consoles, like it promotes it on the back. You can play the deja vu mission mm-hmm. where you get to relive the metal gear moments or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I could probably pick that on the options and nope, you have to get those, <laughs> those patches. So I got to replay oh, Ground careful. Zeroes, get those nine patches, <laughs> and then, but as people have said out there, you could beat it if you skip all the cutscenes, if you know exactly where you're going, you could beat it in under an hour, probably under 30 minutes, you know, the Eurogamer article that came out that they beat it in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, it, it's really fun. I definitely recommend it if you're a big Metal Gear fan. If you're not, mm-hmm. wait for a price drop. That's I'm what sure, I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just wait for a sale. Maybe it goes on PS Plus down the line. Um, I'm sure it'll drop in price eventually. Maybe, which they, they've said they're not doing at this point because it's going to be two separate releases. But I wouldn't doubt that they, they release another fucking collection like they always do <laughs> that brings Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pain in one package. Maybe that's the collector's edition from Phantom Pain. If I think about it right, that, that's probably what they're going to do. Probably. They're going to charge you $80, and it brings Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pain on one disc. I don't know. Let, let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I recommend it. I'm not mad that I paid, you know. I paid 25 plus tax because I'm part of, like, the Best Buy Gamers Club, and that gives you, like, 20% off. So mm-hmm. um, 25 with tax, it, it doesn't really bother me. Yeah. I enjoyed it, and there's still more to me to go back to do. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of things for you to unlock. When I beat it, it said I only completed 10% of the game. So I'm guessing, you know, there's, like, different difficulty levels and different side missions like I was talking about. So there's more there for me to do. Okay. I don't mind it. Um, it's good. I wouldn't say it's uh, absolutely fantastic, because it's it's a short slice of gameplay. Uh, it isn't too long, but I recommend it for Metal Gear fans. Sweet. All right, uh, let's uh, dive into our Ben watching section then. Where? Oh, I guess I'll go first, as I really don't have much this week. Um, I do have two things. First off, it's Marvel's Assembling a Universe, which was a special they put out last night on ABC, and uh, it was basically detailing the start of their studio up to the current. They were talking about how Iron Man was Mm. 
developed and everything, and Hulk and how they started building the actual universe itself. They spoke briefly on, like, all the movies leading up to the Avengers and how it happened. Mm -hmm. And then the best part of the show, they started showing stuff coming in the future. A uh, oh. couple more glances at uh, Captain America the Winter Soldier. Uh, some more behind-the-scenes footage from Guardians of the Galaxy, which mm -hmm. actually had brief glimpses of Glenn, Glenn Close as Nova Prime and Ronan the Accuser into it. And then they started getting into the really good stuff. Avengers Age of Ultron concept art, in which mm -hmm. they showed off several pieces. One including uh, Hulk and Black Widow back-to-back -back as like a building collapsed in the background of them. Uh, concept art for the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, which look absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely tell that Whedon had his hand... Uh, that sounded extremely wrong. <laughs> that, we, that Whedon designed Scarlet Witch as he usually does, because she looks like a Whedon character. And then the cream of the crop, which they showed, Iron Man and Hulk fighting. Mm. Iron Man being in the Hulkbuster armor. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That is really cool. So Age of Ultron is going to have the Hulkbuster armor, which by scale showing him and Hulk fighting was almost like double the size of Hulk. <laughs> wow. So yeah, we're we're going to get the Hulkbuster armor in Age of Ultron, which, uh, as a fan of the comics, I was, I screamed for joy when I saw that, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there were other little brief glances at uh, Ant-Man as well. They showed off some of the test footage that was shown at Comic-Con there the other year. Didn't really say it while they were showing the footage. It kind of popped up during the credits end of the show. But, oh man, it looks so good. Edgar Wright has nailed Ant-Man. Mm -hmm. That's you know that? cool. Yeah. That sounds like a, a cool special. Mm -hmm. I always like seeing those like behind the scenes, like on uh, DVDs and Blu-ray. Whenever I finish watching the movie, I always like to go into the special features and watch those. Mm -hmm. and see like behind the scenes of the concept art and designing the different characters and... This, like the actual special effects, how they yeah. did them in CGI. That's always really fascinated me. Even with the older films, like the Star Wars, the original films, or Jaws. Yeah. Like it's, it, special effects has, have always interested me. And this, oh, and they talked about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as well on the show. Uh, I'm sure you can find us online, <coughs> like I did. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, uh, well, one thing I've been watching, what about yourself? Uh, it's pretty much all, like, wrestling-related for me. <laughs> Kobe. Uh, Total Divas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> season 2. Yeah, that's, like, a guilty pleasure of uh, mine. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's, I enjoy it for, the, you know, because, the, of course, it's not only the Divas. You see Daniel Bryan there. You see John Cena there. You see the Usos there. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not only about them, even if they're the focus. But uh, let's see, WWE Network, been watching more of that. Mm -hmm. uh, WrestleMania Rewind, they just did one on John Cena. And I found it funny how in the same, <laughs> how for him, they did two matches in one WrestleMania Rewind. Usually they just do like one match towards the end of the episode. Yeah. And it, at the beginning of the episode, they just like recap like the feud or whatever was happening at the time and how they got up to that match. But for him, he, he, he got two matches. <laughs> of um, course. WrestleMania 20 and 21. The first one was him against Big Show. I remember seeing that. I was in uh, Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. uh, the next year was against JBL. I can't remember the arena they were in. Madison Square Garden, I remember because I lived in New York at the time. I was supposed to go to that WrestleMania, but... They sold out extremely quick, as yep. all WrestleManias. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was enjoyable. Um, I've been watching more of the Legends of Wrestling, like old, which they actually uh, used to air this on their WWE, uh, like 
what was it called, on demand back in the day. Gotcha. But now since they got the network, they're showing all this. And it's really interesting because they go behind the scenes. They have a panel of uh, a bunch of people who have been in the re- wrestling industry, like JR and Michael Hayes. And they always got some guests like Ric Flair or Pat Patterson or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they go behind the scenes. They pick a topic. Uh, the latest one I saw was it on patriotism. And, of course, they had Sergeant Slaughter on. And they talked about his character. And then they talked about when his character went evil and he turned heel and he went against America and how uh, how crazy that was for him because he actually got death threats um, at the time, which is pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. And then I saw another one on, like, Texas Wrestling, which is really cool. They talked about the Von Erics. They talked about Stone Cold and a bunch of uh, other Texas-based wrestlers like Dusty Rhodes, who, of course, became famous in Florida Championship Wrestling, but... He's from Texas, so it was cool. Um, I'm really digging that they're updating every week, like one or two episodes of um, The Legends of Wrestling, and then one episode of WrestleMania Rewind, one episode of WWE Countdown. So it's cool that they keep adding constant uh, content to keep uh, fans entertained. So, And, of course, the usual Monday Night Raw. Yeah. WrestleMania is right around the corner. Shut uh, up. Raw was difficult to watch. That last, <laughs> that last segment with Daniel Bryan, man, they were really trying to get some heat, like really bad. Like I was getting angry, and of course I know all this is you know story driven. I don't want to say fake because you know what I mean. It's predetermined, and yeah. they got storylines and all that. But man, I was getting heated for real <laughs> at, at Triple H for, for and Stephanie for what they were doing for Daniel Bryan. It was pretty messed up, but of course, I expect this to happen probably next week, too. Mm-hmm. He gets beat up, because it's been like one week he gets beat up, next week he doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, it's yeah. going to be like this WrestleMania. I really hope it ends out that he, he goes into the championship picture and he wins a title. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't, it's going to be really, really <laughs> disappointing, because why do this whole slow build and not make him the champion at WrestleMania, but... Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. That, that's enough of my ranting about wrestling right now. That, that's pretty much all I've been watching. I, I will mention one other thing about wrestling in that. Uh, mm-hmm. Matt Fowler on his wrestling wrap-up, he actually posted like a few things that could happen now mm-hmm. at WrestleMania due to the whole Triple H, Daniel Bryan situation. Yeah. There are one, two, three, four, five options here that could okay. happen. Brian beats Triple H, wins gold in the main event. Brian beats Triple H, doesn't win gold in the main event. Triple H beats Brian, Brian's still put into main event where he wins gold. Triple H beats Brian, Brian's still put into main event where he doesn't win gold. Triple H beats Brian, Brian not in the main event. Crazed, <laughs> crazed fans burn Superdome to the ground. <laughs> the nine hyperbolic <laughs> fire, now fueled by galactic rage, then consumes the world and the humanity. <laughs> I like that last one. <laughs> but it's crazy now that Triple H is in the, the... It's not really in the title picture, but you know what I mean. Possibly in the title Possibly. Picture. It's... Man, it's a life that he could bury anyone that we've if, all been fearing. If Daniel doesn't win at WrestleMania, it's going to be really strange. I think they're going to lose it. Because at this point, fans are pretty, you know... Mm-hmm. They're pretty angry already. Yeah. Uh, I myself, I haven't lost, you know, interest. I don't want to say that, but mm-hmm. if it, if it's after WrestleMania and Daniel O'Brien still hasn't gotten the title, it's going to kind of kill it for me. They really have that window mm-hmm. of opportunity. Like Stone Cold says on his podcast, like JR says on his podcast, they only have a certain amount of time before fans start to lose interest. Yep. Cause at one point you just see getting, you just see Daniel O'Brien get be over and over and over mm-hmm. and you kind of tune out. Yep. And don't really care about it anymore. But at this point, I'm still emotionally invested. And in, in, mm-hmm. in, as far as the storyline goes, I'm hoping at Mania he does win the title because it'll be kind of strange if he doesn't. Yep. Yeah. They if, have they have me until Mania. Yeah. Right exactly. It's like if they screw up Mania, it's like really. <laughs> yeah. If if Daniel Bryan doesn't leave with the title, um, it, it it's just gonna be strange. Because I, I know the next pay-per-view is supposed to be 
in Seattle, and he's from Aberdeen, Washington. So Seattle, they, mm-hmm. it's not really his hometown, but it, it's his home state, and it's yep. around the area. So mm-hmm. the next pay per view is there. So I don't know if they're gonna wait and do it then. If they wait and do it then, it, it's gonna be too late, in my yeah, opinion. Same. They have to do it at WrestleMania because that's the biggest, you know, event of the year. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I could do a whole podcast about this. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's it for me. That's pretty much it. No, the only other thing I've been watching was The Walking Dead. Oh, how's that going? I, I lost interest in that. I got to be honest. I haven't watched it in like two or three weeks. Like the season started, uh, I watched like one or two episodes, and then I kind of lost interest. Uh, It has the last, like not the last episode but the one before that was really mm-hmm. good and the, the episode that aired sunday was probably the absolutely gut-wrenching most emotional episode they've ever done mm-hmm. and it focused on i was going to say four but i guess technically five characters that i guess you necessarily wouldn't want a whole episode revolving around mm-hmm. that was a. Uh, Tyrese, Carol, the two girls, and the baby, Judith. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, they, it was bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, not not bad in terms of quality, just like, like they messed went. up. Like... Yeah, put it this way. Mm-hmm. Uh, they went there. Okay. Like, there was a line on the ground. They didn't just cross that line. They stomped it, they buried it, they lit it on fire, and they pissed on it and then walked away laughing. <laughs> because, yeah, it it was probably one of the best episodes I have ever watched of The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. Like, I would recommend to you to go back and watch that episode at least. The last episode I saw was the one that focused on, uh, like, Michonne. Oh, okay. And, like, it, and she had that whole flashback sequence. You know, about That was her. the first episode, wasn't it? I think it was. I think that's With the last her, one. With her, Rick, and Carol, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, I okay. believe so. Oh, wow. Uh, you are behind. Yeah, I watched it and kind of, I don't know. I lost interest in the series because I think... I, I, if I were you, try to get back into it because mm-hmm. it the last couple of episodes have been really good. Because I, I think my issue with the series is that everybody's going to end up dying eventually. <laughs> like, there's no good ending to The Walking Dead. Like, it's a universe that just keeps going and living on endlessly. You know what I mean? Like, there isn't going to be a point that they get to where it's like, oh, we found a cure, or, oh, we found why this virus is here. That's not what the series is about. So I kind of feel, I, I don't know, I guess I don't want to watch it because I don't want to get depressed because <laughs> it just feels hopeless. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean, it's like the same thing over and over. Everybody's going to die eventually, so it doesn't matter. But uh, I'll, I'll probably get back into it probably when it shows up like on like streaming services like Netflix and Hulu, like when it shows up on there. Because right now I'm kind of, eh. I'd rather <laughs> play the game, like the, the Walking Dead game, mm-hmm. the no, Telltale game that is not the survival instinct. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Mm-hmm. All right, well, that does it for me there. Uh, been reading anything? Nope. <laughs> uh, I'll briefly mention something that I've actually been reading. Uh, before we started recording here, I actually read the first issue uh, of the new Captain Marvel series. Sorry, well, oh. yeah, and uh, it was really good. I mean, I kind of lost track a little bit in mm-hmm. her last series as Captain Marvel. Because they they're just rebooting everything right now at the moment, I believe, starting off fresh with just about everybody's series. And okay. so, I, so I saw the issue there. There was one copy left at the comic book shop, so I said, "Eh, forget. I'll pick it up and read it." And I, I gotta say, I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And they're sent. Well, she's gone off into space now, so it's gonna be interesting to read. Probably a crossover with the Guardians of the Galaxy at some point. So. Looking forward to that. Mm. Oh, I was thinking you were talking about <laughs> Shazam. No, like no. that Captain Marvel. Uh, A.K.A. Miss Marvel. Okay, Miss Marvel. Okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> you said Captain Marvel. I'm like, why do you keep saying it's a girl? <laughs> <laughs> I 
She's like, what's going on? Am I in another dimension? <laughs> Shazam is a female, but... <laughs> That'd be funny, but... Yep, I haven't been reading anything. Fair enough, fair enough. Yep. Uh, Alright, so uh, I guess we can go into our shameless self-promotion section. Hmm. Got anything to promote? <laughs> I just got to promote May 1st. That's all I'm going to say. May 1st. I'll leave it up to Ooh. the imagination. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. May 1st. Eh? Well, we will keep our eyes out for that date. All right. So, well, as for myself, there's, oh, the, us yeah. there is. <laughs> there is the usual ride to hell. <laughs> I saw that one. <laughs> uh, oh, God, it was bad. Uh, the last Let's Experience was Race the Sun, which I did just because Sony announced it's coming to PS3 and Vita soon. Uh, mm. But uh, lately, I've got a new co-op Let's Play that's coming out that I did with a friend of mine, Sure Shot. And that's, uh, we played the game Foul Play, which is quite fun and it was a fun time to play that. Interesting game. And the other thing to promote, next week, I kind of hinted at this last week, uh, my Lord X Versus series. Well, I put it the teaser trailer, I think it was Friday or something along those lines. And coming, starting next Wednesday, will be Lord X Versus Clydeberry Kingdom. <laughs> That's going to be fun. Because I've heard that game is terribly difficult. I, I, I will admit, like, when I was recording through, well, the first five episodes or something, I, uh. I did curse a bit, but not as much as I expected I was going to. Mm -hmm. But I'm assuming that's going to change as time goes on. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I have seen from Achievement Hunter how hard those levels can become. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's going to be fun, and I've got a few other games in mind for a uh, Lord X versus series in the future. But that's it for me for Shameless Self-Promotion. So, as always, guys, if you have questions and comments, please leave them down below. Uh, I don't think we got any last... Damn it! <laughs> nope, it was just yeah, the... Uh, Baby just, No, it was just my own comment, actually. It's Aww. podcast time. Okay, that actually showed up as a comment. Whatever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no comments last week, unfortunately. But, hey, the show got 16 views and three thumbs up last week. That's good. Yeah. Everybody likes a happy genocide, apparently. <laughs> we need questions, guys. Just throw us questions. Mm -hmm. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, questions, comments, win a free game. I, I still have a lot of games I want to give out to you people, but you got to leave questions and comments for me to do that. <sighs> but anyways, I guess that's going to take us to the end of this episode. Uh, Izzy, would you like to do us the honor and take us out? Yep, so as always, appreciate you guys for listening to this show. As Lord X said, leave comments, win some games. <laughs> Please leave comments. <laughs> or I will make more Please Right to Hell God. videos. Yeah, uh, and yeah, that's another show, another Canuck podcast, another week. We had some good stories to talk about, some good games we've been playing. Looking forward to next week, because uh, Infamous Second Son <laughs> is right around the corner. Yep, we'll probably... I gotta get back to South Park, too. I gotta be sad. <laughs> mm. So many games, so little time. Yeah, April's gonna be a good month, though, because there's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> At least for me, there's there's nothing right now. I know you, you got the NIS games coming, but... Yep. And then May... Yeah, Watch Dogs and Mario Kart. Yeah, so anyway, thanks for listening to the show. We'll catch you guys later. Goodbye, everybody. And remember, Games of the Month next week. Ah! Oh, no. <laughs>